Time is ticking away before American troops pull out of Afghanistan and the security pact, which will map out the supportive role they will play when their combat mission is over, is in limbo. Relations between Washington and Kabul are heading for the deep freeze and, as RT's Lucy Kafanov reports, the Taliban could be the ones to benefit. After 13 years in Afghanistan, Washington is counting down. Together with our allies, we will complete our mission there by the end of this year. And America's longest war will finally be over. But ending a war isn't the same as winning one. And when it comes to Afghanistan, peace is far from certain. The security situation is uh, worsening in, uh, in the country, and there is no sign that Americans are, uh, are NATO will be able to stop uh, the war in Afghanistan and to decrease the, uh, the activities of Taliban. And the Taliban have been active. In the past two weeks alone, the group has staged numerous attacks in Kabul, Kandahar, Nimroz, Helmand, and Nangarhar. In fact, Ministry of Interior incident reports reveal clashes with the Taliban in most of the 11 provinces bordering Pakistan. The group also controls several districts in Parwan, just a short drive from the country's capital. Some provinces are believed to be controlled by shadow governments that answer directly to the Taliban. At night, the Taliban run the area. The district government is just there in name, but there is no real security. And it could get worse. A classified American intelligence assessment warns that the initial objective in Afghanistan, removing the Taliban and disabling al-Qaeda's operations in the country, could fail, and that the Taliban could return in full swing by 2017. The U.S. wants some troops to remain in the country. By the Pentagon's logic, the pursuit of terrorists is best based in the region. Same goes for U.S. drones. And without American help, the Afghan army could collapse. But the U.S. first needs the Afghan president to sign off on a key security pact, something he's been refusing to do so far. Now, our position continues to be that if we cannot conclude a bilateral security agreement promptly, then we will be... Uh, forced to initiate planning for a post-2014 future in which there would be no U.S. or NATO uh, troop presence in Afghanistan. There's also the issue of talking with the enemy. The consensus seems to be that the Afghan war could only end in a negotiated settlement with the Taliban, not a military victory. But that's proven elusive. The Taliban are internally divided, and the rift between Kabul and Washington has reportedly empowered hardline commanders who want to keep on fighting at the expense of those who support peace talks. The U.S. war has succeeded in toppling the Taliban regime, and many Afghans have seen their lives improve. But those gains could easily be lost depending on who wins control over Afghanistan, a country that, once again, could be up for grabs. Reporting in Washington for RT, I'm Lucy Kafanov. President Karzai is demanding Washington enters peace talks with the Taliban as a condition for signing the security deal. And we spoke to Jervan Dyke from the Council of Foreign Relations, who was a prisoner of the Taliban. He says the U.S. is not able to curtail the group, which is on the rise. It is a continuous war for over 20 years. They have continued to fight, some of them. And since the American invasion in October 5th in 2001, they have, if anything, increased their, their ability to attack. They're holding forth the United States, even with its surge in 2009, announced by President Obama, has not been able at all to really curtail the Taliban. They are as strong as ever, as committed as ever. And I think this is one reason why there is such difficulty throughout NATO, throughout the West, to figure out how to leave Afghanistan, what to do with the Taliban. Washington has spent billions waging the Afghan war and is still spending despite the mission winding down. Since 2002, it has cost the U.S. taxpayer over $700 billion and his was still to come. In 2014, every American soldier serving in Afghanistan will cost an average $2.1 million. Withdrawing isn't cheap either. The U.S. has decided not to ship back more than $7 billion worth of equipment, so it will all be destroyed. And a brand new military military headquarters built in 2013 at a cost of 34 million will probably never be used. 